Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to Truth Without Podcast. So I want to go over, I've been writing some stuff. Um, I transferred it to my laptop. I'm doing it on my phone. Um, but um, I'm in the process of something. I'll tell you when I when I finish it. But um, I want to share these points with you guys. And um, I want to talk about the essentials of the Christian faith, okay? So... Um, Let's pray and let's get into our study, okay? Um, yeah. Heavenly Father, we want to come before you and thank you for your love and your mercy on the cross and what you have done for us, Jesus. I ask, Lord, that you would empower me with your Holy Spirit, minister to the viewers, Lord, have your way with us, Lord, and draw us near to you, Jesus. Uh, may you be glorified and, and give us a deeper understanding of your word and who you are and what you came to do, Jesus. And Lord, we lift all these things up to you, and it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. So the first essential, um, it's kind of a bunched up together, but it's as one. Um, it's salvation by Christ alone, through grace alone, in faith alone. Okay? The first part we're going to go over by Christ alone. Jesus can be the only way to get to heaven. It's very important, and um, Jesus claimed exclusivity, okay? He left no room uh, to be anything less than God, and we're going to see that, okay? But but Jesus is the only way, and, and he's the one. He's saying that. See, people get mad at me and stuff, but you, you, need, to, you, you need to talk to the Lord about this because I'm not the one going around telling people you know i'm the way you know there's one guy i was watching he was actually um claiming to be jesus he's not jesus um all, all you simply need to ask him if, where he was born and and we exactly know where jesus was born he was born in bethlehem and if you're not born in bethlehem and be betrayed by 30 pieces of silver uh, by a close friend uh, your beard would be ripped out. You'd be put on a cross. Last I checked, no one's being put on a cross these days, you know. But but there's only, there's already one man that went through all of that. And his name is Jesus Christ, uh, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay? But we're going to go over. Um, Jesus is the only way. Because to get to heaven, uh, you actually have to be perfect. Did you know that? To get to heaven, you actually have to be perfect. Jesus said in Matthew 5, 48, Therefore be perfect, just as your heavenly Father in heaven is perfect. That's what separates Christianity from every other religion. Every other religion says, um, let's, teach, let's reach God excuse me, through our efforts. From Buddhism to Hinduism, Jehovah Witnesses, Mormons, uh, spiritualists, the Baha'i faith. Um, yeah, but everything outside of Christianity, but Christianity from, obviously we have different denominations from a Presbyterian, Episcopos, uh, Four Square Church, uh, you have Methodists, you have Calvary Chapels, and uh, so on, but, but we're all one, we all have an agreement, we all agree on these essentials of the Christian faith, and that was settled, um, I believe I always get mixed up with the Count of Nicaea and the Count of Trent. I got to go back on that so I could know the right timeline. But it's, what is it, the uh, 2nd century, uh, 384 and 4 something, I think. But, um, but yeah, those two are essential. One of them is on the deity of Christ and the other one is on the essentials of the Christian faith. Right, the one with the... He was born of the Virgin Mary, conceived by the Holy Spirit, and so on and so forth. I don't know the exact creed, but but you know what I'm talking about if you've done your history. If not, then um, go and do your church history. It's very important. We need to know our roots. Um, Jesus said in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. He said he's the gateway, and anybody hops over is a thief and a robber. That's what he says in the book of John. He was also the only one um, to say in John 8, which one of you can convict me of sin, showing that he is God. Last I checked, only God can be sinless. That's a pretty bold statement. 
And from my understanding, only God can make a statement so bold as this. No man can make a claim um, so bold unless he is God manifested in the flesh. And he did. As John 1.1 1, 1 says, verse 14, In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld the glory, the glory of the end. Uh, let's see. We beheld the glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Hebrews chapter 1. Let me see. I should have grabbed the Bible. I did not grab a Bible. Give me a second. Okay, hold on. I just got a new backpack. My other one ripped. I was so sad. Alright. Now. Revelation, not Revelation, Hebrews chapter 1, if you know, you know it by heart, I love this verse. Excuse me. Oh, I love this. God who has sundry times in diverse manners spoken times past unto the Father by the prophets has in these last days spoken to us by his Son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, when he had by himself purged our sins. Yep, our sins. I sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. The key word that I want to focus on is the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person. He's the monogamous theos. He's the one of a kind God. That's what it says. Um, the brightness of his glory, the express image. Last I checked, God the Father does not have a body. The Bible says that no one has seen God and lived. No one. Moses asked God, he said, he said, I want to see your glory, Lord. And, 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 and I'm paraphrasing. Um, but God's like, he's like, you would blow up. <laughs> I love that part. Because it's so true. That's what he told. He's like, you, you would, your mind would go mad and you would explode. You would be blown out of existence because... I am holy. It's a different realm. You need a different body. <laughs> we will explode in this body if we saw the glory of God. And he said, I want to see your glory, Lord. And then he says, I will. It's interesting. He says, I will show you my back. Isn't that interesting? Mm. To the believer, you already know what I'm talking about. Who, Whose back was scourged? Mm, interesting, huh? You know what I'm talking about. When, when he shows them his back. And then when Moses came down from the mountain, they had to put a bag over his face because his, the glory of God was shining upon his face. They had to hide him from the people because he was so bright. Isn't that interesting? Oh, I wonder if we could ever become like that in this day and age, you know? You literally have to be like, you know, holy to the Lord, you know, just... Throwing every weight, every weight, which so easily ensnares us, you know, and just, and, and be consecrated in the Lord. And I think we might be able to shine like Moses, or sh more like shine like Jesus, you know, because he is the express image of God the Father. And so we need to understand that. So yeah, without getting sidetracked, uh, let's see, um, I haven't seen a man can make the claim unless he's manifest in the flesh. Um, stated, uh, the Bible says in, um, in Acts 4.12, let's see, uh, Acts 4.12, there's no other name, give it among men, whereby we must be saved, the man Christ Jesus, only Jesus, and they were so bold to bet their life on it, I don't want to go into too, too deep on that area, because I'll go sidetracked, but it's talking about can we trust what the apostles were doing, but that's sidetracked, so I don't want to, I want to stay on topic. But if there was another way, God would have made it known to us. What's interesting is that Jesus said to the Father, if you can take this cup away from me, but let not my will, but let thy will be done. He was submitted to the Father. If there was another way, he would have revealed it to Jesus because what did God tell John the Baptist? He said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. <laughs> That's our prayer as believers, excuse me. That's our prayer as believers that we would hear those words. Well done, my good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of 
your rest. That's my heart. That's my desire that I would hear those words. Well done, my good and faithful servant. And I hope it is for you, believer. And if you don't know him, come to know him, please. You do not want to be on earth and separated from the Lord. I don't know about you, but I don't like being alone from Jesus. There's a song, I love, I love, I love your presence. This presence is so... Once you taste it, the Bible says we taste it and seen how the Lord is good. There's no comparison. We try to, we try to, even as believers sometimes, we try to taste everything else, but it's no comparison. Jesus spiritually tastes good. If you know what I'm talking about, like you, what he told the people, he said, e you must eat my flesh and drink my blood. And they're like, this is a hard saying. And then he tells his apostles, do you also want to go? I love what the apostles say, and this is my saying. When my dad passed back in 2020 of September 3rd, um, I had, I was telling my, I was telling a friend um, about it. And I was like, I was telling her about that how how God just made it so perfect that I would be completely reliant on him not trusting anything else because I have nowhere else to go to no one else except Jesus Jesus is the only one so as the apostles say to where can we go you have the keys of eternal life that's just true Nowhere I can go. I have nowhere to go. I don't have a past. I didn't have friends or anything in high school. They all abandoned me. You know? But the Bible says that even when my parents forsake me, he will not. And he's a father to the fatherless. And I love that. Ever since my dad passed, I, I hold on to that verse. He's a father to the fatherless. That's me. So, if you're fatherless, know that you have a father in heaven that loves you. But you need to come to him if you don't know him. And repent of your sins, put your faith in him, and, and be born again, born from above, having the Spirit of God living inside of you. And they were so bold, uh, let's see, if there were any way God would have made it, Father Tom, no matter what, but the Father would let Jesus know in the garden, but the fact that Jesus went to the cross showed that it required a perfect sacrifice, i.e. the sinless man who prophesied 1,000 years ago in the book of Isaiah, demonstrating that Jesus going to the cross was the only way because he is a holy and perfect God and he cannot tolerate sin, which requires a perfect sacrifice. Um, just as in the Old Testament, it required a lamb without blemish, spot, wrinkle, or deformity. They could not use it on the sacrificing table. They couldn't. 1 Timothy 2.5 says, For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. And I'm going to conclude with that. Uh, there's two more other parts, but I'll do it later. But uh, we'll conclude with this. One God, one mediator. See, and I want to tell you something. If you can get this now, get it now. Because you do not want to be in the tribulation. Okay? Chapter 4. Read chapter 4. And uh, the judgment boys. There's 21 judgment boys. You didn't, I don't know about you, but I don't want to be there. I want to be in heaven. Oof. No, thank you. I want to be with Jesus. I'm going to be having celebration with Jesus. There's going to be a heavenly feast. There's going to be rewards. Banquet hall. Going to eat. Filet mignon. Heavenly fil filet mignon. Ugh, I'm drooling right now. <laughs> but seriously. But most importantly, I get to see my Savior, the one who died for me. The one who died for you and loves you with an everlasting love. But you need to come to him and find rest. And I pray that you do. You need to find peace and rest in his word. Okay? He's the only way. He's the only way. And, and, and get this. I'll conclude with this. All the other religions, guess what? They all teach you can get to heaven any other way. It's interesting enough. You can get to heaven any other way. Any other way. That's the harlot. The one who drank the blood of the saints. That's religious Babylon. And she's going to be devoured. And guess what? You're going to be bamboozled. The Antichrist is going to ask for it to be worshipped. 
And if you take the mark, you're done. You're you're on your way to hell. You're sealed. You're sealed. So repent now. Repent now. Because a lot of people, guess what? I was reading and listening to Pastor David. and in the, I've been in the book of Revelation the past couple of days. And he was talking about how about one or about over two, is it million or billion, two million people. Or billion people are going to die right off the bat just because of the earthquakes and the famines and the sickness and all that. Um, that's what's going to happen. So please don't go through that. Repent and turn to Jesus. He is the only way. God bless you. I love you. But most importantly, he loves you. Okay? He showed it. He demonstrated it on the cross 2,000 years ago. God bless you. Follow and subscribe for more, guys.